All right, I'm gonna call a meeting to order. Whatever the time is at the moment, it's 6.30. It is. And could I have a voice roll call? Donna, Mac. Donna, Donna, Mac. Mac White, present. Peter Dunlop. Sandy Slavin. Jim Jaberti. Okay, we've got a quorum. And we have no minutes uh, for this week. I got to, uh, I'm sure you all got a notice from uh, Christiana that the meet, the minutes weren't right. So we'll have them for the next meeting. And Jimmy, we didn't get a, we didn't, did not get our packets electronically. Really? <clears throat> okay, she was supposed to have sent those out electronically on. Well, Tuesday, when's Tuesday? I picked them up in the office today, but I don't remember getting it in the email. I mean, I well, I picked mine up. Uh, Mac, did you get any? No. Nope. Oh, I don't believe I got an email, but I, I'd have to check. That wouldn't be fair okay. if I don't check. Which I can. Okay. All right. Uh, Citizens participation. Do we have anybody out there that wants to leap in on a citizens participation? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll go on to sewer business. The first item on the agenda is Robin Hood, Robin Hood Road, GAF Engineering. Uh, this one, they're looking to get on the in the queue for 3,080 gallons a day under a Title V. Uh, just right there. How many There's, units is that? I couldn't, I, I didn't know how many condos. Seven, seven units. Oh, it's seven units? Seven, seven single seven. family dwellings with four bedrooms each. Seven, four bedrooms. Wow, okay. Standalone homes. Stand alone. Yep. And they want to hook into our sewer system going across to what? How many? Three blocks worth or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. 1,500 uh, feet. Yes. Tying into this uh, point of independence, I think it was Nanumit uh, Street off of Nanumit Street. Street. They'll come in. Woodbury, Nanumit, right. that area there, they would come in. They've got a distance of approximately 1,500 feet. Forced, uh, they're going to anticipate sewer conveyance to be a two inch force main installed by directional drilling. Are we going to ask I, for grinding pumps? Pardon me? If it's a two inch force main, I'm going to assume it's grinding pumps. Yes, ma'am. It's got one, one pump station. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, don't see, I don't see a date when they're expecting to want to be connected. Uh, right now, they just want to get in the queue. They want to get in the queue. Yeah. They want to get in the queue. That's all they're going to get anyway. Well, I don't see any problem with that. No. I, I mean, if the moratorium the is still on, the moratorium is still on. But right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll make a motion that we'll we'll put them on the list then. Okay. Do I have a second? No second. Max second. All in favor? Sandy. Aye. Peter. Yes. Aye. Right, Jim. Okay. Aye all around. So this makes the number five, just to keep track, this is number five. Number one. No. What? I think, isn't this the fifth My one? My knowledge. Opinion? This is the fifth one, I believe. My knowledge, yes. <clears throat> okay. Put that one to bed. The next, we have a list of abatements. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I move that we accept the abatements A through N as they've all been vetted by the superintendent and recommended for approval. Uh, correction to that. <clears throat> uh, I didn't think they all were. What you have, what you have suggested, uh, I was just gonna do that same thing, Peter. Okay. A through, a through L. I, I'm sorry. 
A through K, mm -hmm. skip L, then M and N. So that's a 13 abatements that have been approved for a total of 6,113, or $112.06. Okay. Now we can go through them individually if you want, or we can take them as a bulk for those. I've got one item I'm holding out at the moment. I'll bring that one up next. I believe that was a denial. That's correct. Yes. I think we that, had a... Guy, was that the only denial? Yes, it was. It was one of the yes, conversation that Mr. Chairman okay. and I had yep. with the Sorry. gentleman. I'm abatements A through K, K and then M and, M and N. Correct. That total dollars abatement is six thousand one twelve oh six. Six thousand one hundred twelve dollars and six cents. And six cents. I make a motion we approve the abatements as presented on the. June 27th meetings, letters A, A through K, M, and N. I have a second. Second. Back second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five, zero, zero. Okay, now we have one for Conroy. And he sent a extensive letter justifying his reasons for wanting the abatement. Two and a half pages long. Yeah, so I sent an extensive letter. He's a lawyer, what do you want? He gets paid by the the word. Uh, uh, Jimmy, I have a question. The, the minutes, the agenda says 245 Main Street. It, um, the letter from uh, Mr. Campion, this is 247 Main Street. What are we talking about? The same building. The same building. Same same building. Same, same. Yeah. Uh, okay. Guy, uh, you've read his letter. You've had discussion with him. You want to just bring people up to speed on what that is? Um, yes. Actually, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, the second abatement from him we, we, we denied for the very same reasons. Uh, he believes the EDU is unfair. It's not applied properly. Uh, we also had a conversation, I want to say a week ago, um, in that area on the telephone at the plant. We, we put him on the speaker and had a very lengthy conversation with him. Um, he's asked to help us, or he asked if he can help us get the water information. But he believes unless it's water based, it can't be equitable. I informed that we're working on restructuring EDU, but um, he, sa he stated that um, he understood, but he still feels it's inequitable. And uh, he thinks that EDUs doesn't apply to him. He's not using the water that he believes should um, should uh, justify the cost we're charging by it via the EDU structure. Um, so I told him I would come out to his property, reevaluate if that it was if that's what he needed. We'd reevaluate the property, and 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 do the EDU again by our EDU chart. Okay. Um, and I'm waiting for him to, to call me back to say give me a time and date to go out and meet. Bye. Yes. Why does this unit have three EDUs? What's so unique about this property? It has uh, multiple office build offices within the building. Okay, so it is an office building. Yes. Yes. I asked him if he could make it, make it one big office, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I, I don't know if he's willing to do that. So I, I suggest we meet, we'll sit with him and we'll look at it and go over the, you know, the actual structure of the EDU and apply it and see what we come up with. Okay, as an aside, and to Mac also, uh, I'm going to keep his letter aside, put it with the EDU stuff that we're working on, because he brought up some points within it that I think we should at least address when we go over the EDUs. Uh, but that's not, not a discussion for tonight, just as an FYI that uh, his letter will be considered when we're looking at reevaluation. Okay, do I have a motion to accept? Mr. Campina's proposal or recommendations. 
I make a motion that we accept Mr. Campina's recommendation on is two forty seven Main Street. Affirmative. Two forty five. What 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 is it? Two forty seven. Yes. The same place. Same place. Oh, okay. On the sewer bill, it's two twenty of two forty five. No, oh. the sewer bill sewer bill has two forty seven. Yeah. I just sewer. want to make sure we're Not all. My sewer bill. I have 247. A property location. Oh, I see. The property location and his address are different, and yet they're the same building. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Donna's made a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Peter seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, roll call. Donna, yeah, yes, Donna. Mac. Aye. Don Sandy. Yes. Peter. Yes. And Jim, I. Five zero zero. Okay, that takes care of those cuties. Mm. And now we have Kleinfelder to discuss directional drilling. Yes. And who, who is going to be the operative one for that? The operative one? I thought we maybe a guy would at least do an introduction. Mr. Us, Chair. <laughs> that Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know what that operative, Mr. Chairman, uh, Kleinfelder led by Dennis Doherty and his team, uh, are going to present to us tonight okay. the, um, the proposal to directional drill from the treatment plant to the um, Cape Cod Canal via Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Uh, Dennis has been in the business for quite some years. Um, I'm told he's one of the top three drillers in the country. Uh, he comes highly recommended. Um, I serve on the board of directors with him for the uh, trenches technology. Thank you. Before we start, there was nothing in our packet. Was that is that was done on purpose? There's nothing not in the packet. There's nothing in the packet. I, I had nothing I to have, look at. There was, um, uh, um, there's also going to be able to view. So we'll go to YouTube. Okay. I mean, I. I picked up my packet and I have stuff in mind. I don't, let me just, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know why it isn't in the rest of them that we're receiving. There's a buy and, and there's a, and so anyways, uh, um, he's going to kind of explain all that. And I think um, he'll be very thorough. And you got, if there's any questions from the board, then he'd be more than happy to address it. He has a team with him. Um, who can address any specifics, you know, geologists, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'd like to introduce Dennis Doherty and his team. Dennis, yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I apologize if the packet um, got misplaced somehow. Uh, the packet that we had sent along was our qualifications uh, and also um, so there were some links in there. It was kind of to so we could save time here. There were links in there to YouTube videos that were showing a long ball um, HDD um, and um, to explain it so you could have a better understanding of what's happening. Anyways, next slide, please. Dan? Thank you. As you notice, my name is Dennis Doherty. I'm a senior principal professional, um, basically the national practice leader for Trusted Technologies at Kleinfelder. Uh, I've been very involved with the industry for well over 30 years. Uh, I've actually helped write a lot of the industry standards. Uh, I, will, I will make reference to a book later on in my discussions on the HDD Good Practices Manual. I was the Blue Ribbon Chair Committee uh, to, re to review and approve that standard. It, it is a national standard for directional development. I'm gonna turn it over to Gus and Gus can uh, introduce himself. Sure. My name is Gus O'Leary. I am uh, also a trench specialist with Kleinfelder. Been with Kleinfelder for about ten years, and practiced before that for another five. 
Uh, I am the project manager for the initial phases of the project and likely the, the phases going forward. Dan? My name is Dan. Uh, I'm a water resource project engineer. I was the primary author of uh, the report, the technical memo we submitted uh, on this project. Uh, Neil? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Dan and Dan's driving the presentation. Hopefully everyone can see that. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you if you if you can or, or shout out if you can. Uh, my name is Neil Kolokowskis. I'm a senior program manager. I've been with Kleinfelder uh, actually going on my 20th year now. Um, so I've pretty much focused my career on supporting communities with all facets of, of really wastewater pro projects. So uh, um, uh, we're you know we're excited as a team to uh, spend a little time with you here tonight and uh, uh, appreciate appreciate your time. Um, so the, the presentation that we have is about 20 to 25 minutes long. Um, uh, that's without any questions. Um, we practiced a couple times, so I think we'll I think we will get through it in that time. But feel free to jump in with questions along the way if you have them. Certainly, uh, it's really broken down into three parts. Most of it's going to be Dennis talking about the work we did for you. I'm going to kick us off and talk a little bit just about flying. So I just want to make sure that uh, you all are familiar with who Kleinfelder is, and then. Gus will, Gus will close us out with a little bit of discussion around permitting, funding, and, and potentially what are the next steps in, in this exciting project. So uh, go ahead, Dan. So uh, who is Kleinfelder? So um, Kleinfelder is a national company. Uh, we've, uh, we're up to about uh, uh, 3,000 people, close to 3,000 people, 60 offices nationally. Um, really en engineering is our focus, uh, certainly, but engineering scientists, construction professionals, uh, we work uh, mainly, our main markets are water, energy, and transportation markets. Uh, but in New England in particular, uh, I think, you know, particularly important to, to you all here uh, tonight is uh, we, we really have a strong uh, New England presence, really going back to the, to the 50s, um, really with a focus on water, wastewater. Um, there's about 300 staff and seven offices in, in New England, uh, really to support uh, this type of work. So. Um, what you'll see, what you know, what what we want to talk about. Go ahead, Dan. Is you know, we really as a, as a company, we have, uh, uh, and with Dennis, uh, uh, with Dennis's involvement, we are extremely uh, strong in the HDD business. Uh, but we're also you know really well well positioned to work with you and uh, uh, you know as a, as a wastewater commission, as a sewer commission, really with you know a project like this. So again, why why are we known in the HDD business? Of uh, we've. Um, uh, we 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 really we've worked on design and oversight of of uh, uh, we say hundreds uh, uh, of HDDs, and you know really uh, our work on the construction side in particular really uh, ensures that you know we're factoring in things like risk mitigation and constructability into our design. So our through our work in construction, our designs have gotten better. So it's, it's you know iterative process there with design and construction. And really, one of the things that Kleinfelder is well known for throughout the country is, is our geotechnical practice. So uh, there's a lot of water, wastewater engineers that do HDD, but um, involving you know, our geotechnical engineers that are experienced in HDDs in particular, I think is a little bit of a dif differentiator for us. And, and we feel that um, uh, you know, as opposed to bringing in a different firm, you know, we've got specialists in-house who, who focus on that. Yeah. Good, Dan. And then, really, I just wanted to really highlight our, our water wastewater service. We're, we're a, a full service water wastewater firm. Um, you know, everything from collection systems, CSOs, to uh, treatment, to planning, uh, you know, really, again, all the facets uh, planning, permitting, design, construction. Uh, but we're also a multi discipline firm. We've got, uh, we've got uh, in house uh, support services. Uh, including geotech, as, as we discussed, but architectural, structural, environmental remediation helps us really stay efficient on, on, uh, on large multi multidiscipline projects. So I, again, just a little bit about Kleinfelder. We had hoped to send our quals. We'll definitely follow up this meeting with our quals, but um, you know, I guess we'll take a quick pause to see if you had any questions just about Kleinfelder before Dennis really jumps into the, the meat of our, our presentation and, and the, uh, the feasibility analysis. Uh, no questions. Yeah, I'm set. Okay, great. I, I just want to say we do have the quals, and I'll make sure everybody gets it. The quals will be at the office, definitely. Thank yeah. You, 
And and we also had sent you some um, video clips of YouTube. Um, we, you know, we're working under the ground. One of the reasons that geotech is so important is because we need to understand how the ground is going to behave when we put a big hole in it. Okay. Uh, this is an overly simplified uh, application. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is put in a pilot hole. We're going to drill from point A to point B, rough to right. Uh, the rig, it's a surface launch, even though you see pits, the reason you have pits on either side is to collect drill mud. We use drill mud in our process to help maintain the borehole stability because all that's holding open the hole is, is, is a slurry, okay? Uh, so the first thing is, is to get our, our drill from point A to point B. Once we have that in, we then increase the borehole size, okay? And it's called reaming. Now we'll ream in the hole size up to its uh, one and a half times the borehole diameter. So for example, with uh, Wareham, we're looking at a 24 inch pipe. So we're gonna have a 36 inch borehole to put this in. Now, why do we have such a big borehole? That's to help move fluid around, help maintain borehole stability and so forth. Then at the final thing is we, we end up doing a pullback. So this is actually the black pipe. It's a poor, it's a poor example. Uh, but it's, it's a pipe that actually goes out and stretches. So if I have a, a, a bull hole that's five, 6,000 feet long, preferably I have five to 6,000 feet of pipe ready to go in the hole. If you, go, if you don't have that, you want to limit the amount of times you have to stop. Why is that important? It's because of bull hole stability issues. Next slide, please. So now we're going to get to the meat of the, of the alignment. The red alignment or alternate one is the railroad alignment. The blue alignment or alternate two is route six and the green alignment is um, alternate three, uh, which is Onset Avenue. When you look at the little squares, B1, B2, B3, R3, et cetera, those are areas that were coming up near the surface or to the surface, such as what you just saw in that previous slide where we were drilling, that's going from point A to point B, point B to point C, et cetera. Uh, those are fairly long drills. These are long bore drills. We're in the five to 6,000 foot range, four or 5,000 foot range. These are not your typical small bores that you see out there. This takes a lot of engineering and a lot of understanding of the ground conditions. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this, but what we did do is look at some of the geology and geotechnical issues. Um, we used geotechnical data from the Cohasset Narrows Bridge into uh, Bourne, and that was, um, those were down deep, those were down 150 feet, very dense, tight, very good ground conditions. We also looked at the geotechnical conditions along Route 6 because of the Route 6 reconstruction. Those borings typically only went down 20 to 30 feet. We had some loose sands, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later on. Um, you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that the, the lengths of HDD and total lengths. You notice that the onset AV only has 9,600 feet of, 9,700 feet of directional drilling because we felt that the traffic was not that bad and we could open cut it uh, in portions. That would be the green dashed sections where this would all be open cut. You also see, Right below, right below that, that you see a dark green line that goes to G4 to G5. That was one of our original lines. We changed this because when we look at things, we look at risk and risk management and how and no one understands how the methods work. So we want to make sure that, we, that we're not putting any additional risk on the project. We, we, we designed to manage our risk to take care of things. You also see over on the right-hand side, you see G6 to G7 versus G6A to G7. I'm gonna talk about those in a little while. Why we changed that little bit of design. You can barely see, it's a barely a, a difference there. But it's important when you're looking at property rights, when you're looking at impacts to the public, when you're looking at geotechnical risk. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. We know that the, the, the railroad, the MBTA alignment, uh, the, the way I was originally approached them and MBTA has expressed concern with the railroad settlement primarily, settlement of the tracks. There were ways around that and there were ways to, to get around that. One of the things that happened with the MBTA and Jacobs Engineering reviewing the work 
was they were concerned about being within 25 feet of the rails. That the, the right of ways there are extremely wide. And I'm gonna show you how the approach that we wanna to use to go down the railroad is uh, it, the, the thing is to limit the amount of potential settlement of the tracks, okay? And lateral movement of the tracks. So to mitigate that, we're talking about going down a hundred feet down. And that makes a big difference. So that means we're only popping up in the railroad alignment or any place, uh, but right, roughly four or five times. Um, we're also gonna use what we call a conductor sleeve. A conductor sleeve is a steel casing that goes into the ground. Uh, we drive it into the ground to the depth that we want. Uh, in this case here, we're looking at 20 to 25 feet. As you recall, I mentioned the uh, Route 6 railroad alignment, I mean, excuse me, the Route 6 alignment and the geotechnical borings showed that we only had uh, loose soils near the top, near the top 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. So we wanna make sure that the ground's not gonna move there or have an inadvertent return. Now, an inadvertent return is when, as I mentioned, we have drill mud holding up the boreholes and trying to keep the pressure open. That drill mud is also used to take the, the soil cuttings that we have and mix it, mix it with the soil, with the drill mud and, and under pressure pulls it all the way back to the surface where we then treat it and we take out the, we take out the soil cuttings and then we recirculate it. That does take some pressure. It takes some velocity and, we, and, to, and to drive that drill mud, oh, I don't know, three or 4,000 feet horizontally and then up hundred feet does take some pressure. We need to balance that against the ground pressure that's out there. And understanding it from a geotechnical standpoint helps us create a good model of the ground. Next station, please. So here we are on the route, um, the railroad alignment. You can see it's, it's very nice. Over the left-hand side, you see R1, that is the wastewater treatment plant. On the right-hand side, you have R6, that is down at the Mass Maritime. You see the four places in the middle, uh, those are all popping up and down. Now, the advantage to being in the railroad alignment is we can assemble all the pipe in the railroad alignment. There's, there's enough room there, with the exception of between R1 and R2 and R5 and R6. But we can assemble the pipe in the railroad alignment and pull it in that direction. So it saves a lot of the impact. Now, the other question is, well, gee, you said this, you don't want to be too close to the railroad. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> You see in here that we have the force main is roughly going to be 30 feet from the tracks. It's really going to be 30 to 50 feet from the tracks. And the intent, and that, that's done on purpose. We do have to cross the tracks at one time. That may be a bit of a challenge, but at being at 100 feet, the settlement is going to be negligible. Next, next slide, please. So this is what it's going to look like. You see on either end, you have the purple. It's, 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 it's a little bit cartoonish. Uh, you have the HDD entry and exit pits. That's that. Those are there to help collect drill mud so we can properly uh, control it and, 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 and dispose of it and treat it. Uh, at 100 feet deep, though, the ground is very, very hot. We're looking at 60, 70 blow counts based on the rail, based on the bridge borings. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the 20 to 25 feet is because we had some loose borings on the uh, Route 6. So that's where we have a conductor sleep. Why would we drive a conductor sleeve in the ground? Well, that's going to help prevent settlement near the surface. And I'm going to talk about that. Next slide. This is a conductor sleeve going in the ground, okay? This is a 36-inch pipe. On the back end of it, you see hanging on a, um, a support is a what we call a pipe ram. What that's doing is it's pneumatically driving that steel pipe into the ground. That's going down 20 feet, but that pipe could be 150 to 200 feet long, depending on the angle. So how does that stop it? Well, if you look on the right-hand side, this is representative from a book called Stein. This is the governing method for calculating settlements. Uh, and you can see the little grayish area, uh, hatched area above the circle. That is the um, overcut in the borehole, okay? So in theory, that overcut volume equals the overcut volume up at the top, where you see that nice little uh, dip up there, not that little triangle right there. In theory, so this is exaggerated 
but it, we can measure that and calculate it based on the engineering science behind it. So that steel, that steel casing is being driven in the ground. You can see markings on it, the uh, white lines that that is marking every six inches how far it's gone in. And that will be driven all the way into the ground so just the top sticks out. Once that's done, the drill rig will go behind it and then use, the, use that to centralize their drill pipe put going down the middle of it. Of course, we're gonna clean out, we're gonna auger out at least three quarters of the cuttings, the dirt that's inside that for a reason. We wanna use that to help control drill mud, but it will also prevent settlement near the surface in, in the inverted returns. Next slide, please. So, the, allow, the North American Society for Trenches Technologies, HDD Good Practices Manual, your fourth edition, the one that I was the blue ribbon chair for, uh, has, these, has this guidance for sediment and allowable sediments. Uh, on the railroads, it's one quarter inch to a half inch. That's from based on ARIMA. Okay, the, one, the quarter inch is when you're near a railroad track. Here you have a single track most of the way until you get down uh, closer to the born area where you have a switch. That switch is only allowed to settle a quarter of an inch. Now at hundred feet, this is what this is telling me is I'm gonna settle a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, 0.12 inches, 0.13 in that range. That's, now, please remember that's at the center line of the drill, not the center line of the pipe. So, and I mentioned before, we're gonna be 30 to 50 feet off to one side. So if you're looking here now at 30 feet, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit less than a tenth, a little bit around a tenth of an inch and at 40, 50 feet um, at 0 0.5, 0 0.08, 0 0.7. This is at 100 feet deep. So what happens when we're near the surface? Next slide, please. When we're near the surface, okay, at 10 feet, we're going to get 0.7 inches. That's more than a half an inch. Oh, that, that's bad. But I'm pushing those entry and exit points as far away from the tracks as possible, the 30 to 50 feet. So therefore, if you look at this, the 30 to 50 feet, I practically have negligible settlement at 10 feet. And, and that's not even gonna happen because we're gonna have the steel conductor sleeve in place there. Now at 20 feet, it's less than a half an inch, but again, you can see that 30 to 50 feet, it's practically negligible in the settlement. And that's what the railroad is mostly concerned about. Do we have any questions on this? Mm. No, okay. okay. Next slide, please. Proven facts that this does work with the railroad. I did a project uh, for uh, Dominion Energy in Alexandria, Virginia, and we were putting in 6,300 feet of 48 inch RCP to put in high voltage um, in that area. This happened, you can see four tracks in here, or three tracks, there's gonna be a fourth one, uh, that purple one. Uh, and we, we, we were allowed to get within 15 feet of that and, and the settlement was negligible and, and CSX allowed us to go ahead and install this. So if they're, they're concerned about settlement. So as long as we're worried about where the settlement is and, and how the ground, ground tracks are moving, that's their main issue. That doesn't take away the fact that we may have contaminated ground, we may have some other issues in here, we may have some easement issues we need to talk about. We're gonna talk about that in a minute though. Next slide, please. So, you know, when we look in the, when we look in the uh, railroad alignment, we're looking at roughly, like I said, 30 to 50 feet. Uh, we, have, we have both, the, the easement itself is fairly wide, the railroad alignment, but you will need to get easements from them. Uh, we also have what we call sliver easements, okay? And the example on the right is a sliver easement. And that's because that railroad alignment is not straight, okay? It's got a lot of jogs in it with these piece people popping property in and out. So we would be potentially cut across, as you can very clearly see, just an edge of the property. Uh, it's gonna be down deep. And it that is gonna be one of the costs for getting the easements, but we try to maintain as minimal easements as possible. Next slide, please. So the Route 6 alignment, it's a little bit tougher. We don't have any place to put pipe. It's a lot tougher to put pipe. 
uh, you know, we can put pipe, we can, we can assemble pipe at the wastewater treatment plant and go from G1 to B, excuse me, B1 to B2. But where do I put pipe when I want to go from B2 to B3? What I'm thinking is we're going to have to segment it and lay it out along Route 6 to the west along, along that black line there. And then that takes care of that pipe to B3. So now I get to B3, how do I get the pipe in? Where, where am I going to assemble pipe? Let's use the railroad alignment. Okay. Now, granted, you know, we get, we, we're near the waterways. We know that that parking lot there is absolutely packed during the summertime. So this would have to be a off season. But what we would have to do is we would put the B3 roughly in the parking lot to the far right of that picture on the bottom. And then we'd have to find a way to snake the pipe from the railroad alignment across that property and into the borehole. That is not unusual. I've done it before. I've done it in Atlanta where we, we assemble the pipe a quarter of a mile away and drag it through the streets before we put it into the borehole. It can be done. Um, B, B, the, B, the, B, the B4 to B5, B4B is actually going to be an open cut. The reason for that, it's a piece of private property. Uh, we, we talked to Guy about it. We thought it was a, a reasonable thing. Reason for that is because we can't make the bends with the pipe. You can only bend the pipe so much, okay, uh, without breaking the pipe. So that's part of the guidance behind the design. So how are we going to get that pipe in? Okay, well, if you look at B5, it's right next to the Cohasset Narrows. And this has been done, I've done this. So what we do is we assemble the pipe and we float it out into Cohasset Narrows. That will require coordination with the Coast Guard and have navigational aids and so forth, but it works. And we just have to snake it into the borehole. Uh, for B5 to B6, we would assemble the pipe in the Cape Cod Canal, float it in the canal, and then when we're ready, pull it and position it and pull it back. Those are challenges that are gonna be there. Every single product, every single alignment we looked at had uh, some some level of contaminated ground. Route six had the worst <laughs> conditions, uh, but it was there. Next slide, please. So onset F. Onset F, we said, hey, most of it's going to be open cut. This is great. I've already kind of explained the G4 to G5. To get around that, I'm going to go G4 to G5A. Why? Well, there's a reason I'm going to show you on the next slide. That G4A to G5A is something called a micro tunnel. It is not an HDD because we don't have the space to put an HDD in here. A micro tunnel is a tunnel is a, is a small micro tunnel machine that we would just go underneath the broad cove inlet there, from one side to the other. Uh, next slide, please. So why is onset app? an issue. On the right hand side, you see a geological map. It, this, this is what we go and we look at when we do these types of science studies. It's telling us what types of ground there is. The lighter yellow orange color uh, matches up very well with the geotechnical borings that we saw from Route 6 and from uh, the, the bridge. That darker brown though is a glacial uh, Anomaly, I guess, for lack of a better word. What it does is it's we're on the edge of where the glaciers stopped at the ocean. And as they started retreating, they some of these on the front leading edges had huge boulders, as can be exampled on the left hand side picture. Uh, I call it the school bus, maybe not quite as big as a school bus, but it's a good size boulder. And on the right hand side is the a location for uh, Independence Lane, uh, where they have the boat yards. You can see just as many uh, cobbles and boulders there. So to try to trench, go, go trench this down the street, you're adding risk to the job because those you don't know where those cobbles and boulders are. You don't know how they're going to affect. Maybe so not, not so much on Onset Ave, but on the next slide I'm going to show you, which is Hammond. Next slide, please. Uh, is Hammond. That's a very narrow street. You can see the rise in the land. That's, that's that that darker brown spot rising through this area with all the cobbles and boulders. So if, if we start hitting these cobbles and boulders, these huge ones, they, they start moving and the ground starts moving and unfortunately the houses may start moving. So that's why we walked away from that one and we went to, well, let's go look at the G4 to G45A, G4A to G5A, excuse me, and that's the microtonal. So that has to be worked out, but it, it has been done actually uh, 
just to keep you comfortable on the microtone. I'm one of the I'm one of the principal authors for the microtone standards for the ESD. So I know a little bit about it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, go back one, please. One other one other issue was the G6, the G7 versus the G6A to G7. The G6A is a vacant piece of land. Uh, it's wetlands, but it's um, it's unbuildable. Uh, at least it appears to be where G6 would be at the end of this street that we're looking at in the picture on the right. We know we have flooding down there. The lady, the nice lady on the right hand side, was complaining about how her cars have drowned a few times uh, because of the high tides. That's going to be a problem, and that's also a very narrow street to be open cut. And uh, yes, we understand that. Uh, we would have to take a slightly different route, the lighter green to get to the G6A. It's an option, uh, but it's there. Uh, so that is it for the most part. Any questions on what I have on these alignments? The, the report goes into a lot more detail. We didn't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, the report goes into all the easements. It goes into all the contaminated grounds, goes into historical facts. We have the cost estimates in there. Uh, and they're, they're, it's, it's, it's stacked full of information. Uh, I don't know if a guy has shared yeah. that report with you yet, uh, but uh, it's there. Uh, next slide, please. Neil? Actually, I'll take this one, Dennis. Okay. All right, so uh, just to build off of what Dennis was, was finishing up talking about, we've got some of the permits that we're looking at for all three alignments here, all three alternatives. Uh, just in case, um, didn't catch it when when Dennis Dennis ran through it. The red alignment, the railroad alignment, was actually our recommended uh, approach to a directional drill uh, installation for this force main out to the out to the Cape Cod Canal. So, uh, a couple highlighted here in orange. A couple permits highlighted here in orange. Uh, you heard Dennis refer to. Uh, some DEP, some wetlands, uh, particularly on the Onset Avenue alignment, but all three alignments really have some wetlands in them. Uh, we'll be dealing with DEP on wetlands. We'll be dealing with uh, DEP on Chapter 91 for tidelands as well uh, for all three of these alternatives. Um, you heard Dennis refer to uh, pipeline assemblies in the canal and in uh, Cohasset Narrows. So we'll almost we'll certainly be dealing with the Coast Guard on those as well. Uh, and obviously, the railroad alignment will require a license from the MBTA, uh, which is no small feat. Um, so next slide, please, Dan. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit while we were here with you about the funding you have available to you. Uh, I don't know if we don't know if any, you know, if the town has has begun to explore funding for a project like this. Um, I think the, the town is aware of how much a, this project is, is likely to cost. Um, we do have an experienced group of specialists uh, for coordinating and obtaining funding, both federally and state at the state level. Uh, we do quite a bit of work with the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, obviously, that's a, a, a big source of money for a project like this. Uh, there's also WIFIA funding, Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act funding, available from EPA, EPA at the federal level. Uh, that is actually also the source of some of the, uh, the SRF funding at the state level. Um, those would be the two primary funding sources we would see for the majority of this project. Um, there's also some development-based funding that would be available for some of the, the ancillary um, regionalization efforts, potentially. Uh, I don't know. I, I actually if anybody is, is willing to speak to it or has, has the background to speak to it, would be interested in hearing what, what kind of funding um, the town has looked at for, for this project. Well, we've discovered bake sales are out. <laughs> Lemonade stands too. <laughs> well. Okay. Uh, we're looking at regionalization as a potential for some source, sort of funding, but that won't be that won't be the answer. That'll only be a, a help portion. Right. Uh, uh, these others that you're proposing right now are ones that uh, are in the mix somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, a project of this size is, is almost always going to have some kind of SRF involvement. The, the SRF is going to be interested in helping fund a project like this. Um, you know, 
we could see, you know, we have seen SRF funding turned down by the town or by towns, I should say, uh, where, you know, alternate financing at a, a lower interest rate is available. Um, the WIFIA funding is occasionally a lower interest rate. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we put that on the, the screen here. Um, there are, you know, there's some additional paperwork associated with WIFIA at the federal level. There's, there's some other things associated with that. So, um, yeah, I, I think projects of this size, you know, no one sole source is, is all of it. Uh, but, you know, I think we have, we have the group, we have the people to, to help the town with, you know, explore the, the alternatives available to you and make a plan for it. That's a plus. Right. That's a plus. Thank you. Thank you. Next step, Stan. All right. So um, right up against the end of time here. Don't want to take up any more time than we, we need to. But uh, we do have a couple next steps here, assuming the town agrees with our recommendation of the pursuing the railroad alignment. Uh, obviously, the town has spoken to the railroad previously about utilizing that alignment in an open cut configuration. So we would need to reapproach the railroad, solicit some feedback and provide some additional information, show them some of the calculations that we've already done uh, about how we can mitigate their settlement concerns, taking a trenchless approach and uh, coordinate that whole process with the MBTA. Um, we'd also want to review the fund funding and the scheduling for that funding, because obviously, you know, particularly with SRF, there's, there's funding deadlines that need to be met. Um, and once we, you know, once we do those things, we would feel pretty comfortable finalizing the approach with the railroad and beginning a geotechnical exploration program to, you know, educate ourselves and firm up some of the risk, the geotechnical risk that Guy spoke to, I'm sorry, that Dennis spoke to, and moving forward at that point with a preliminary design. So next steps immediately would be speaking to the railroad and moving forward with understanding what kind of funding we, we want to be looking at so we can set a, a project schedule. Um, once those things are firmed up, then we would proceed with, with geotechnical investigations. So I think from there, uh, we would want to open it up for any questions on the, the routing analysis that we did, uh, any questions around the funding, permitting, or next steps that, that I presented. Would you people be making the contact with the railroad or us? Uh, we could we could do it either way. We have contacts there. I've, uh, I've done a license each of the each of the last four years for various clients. So um, we have we have contacts at the railroad. Uh, we would probably want to make sure we know who you had spoken to there previously, uh, so we could try to reach out and and revisit uh, you know somebody who has some background in the project, but. Uh, Either would be either would be possible, whichever is that the town is most comfortable with. We have the information from I believe it was Chalita, I think your last name we had talked to originally. So we have all that contact information. Last time we went through our state representative uh, to get in front of uh, mass um, um, rail. Uh, we probably use the same approach. Um, it may be wise to to start you know engaging in conversation. Um, the project, uh, I think it's being presented out to, to the, um, different communities, um, to different players to see where we all want to go with this. So I think it's a little premature to, to, to move forward 100%, but I, I believe reaching out to the rail would be something that we should do almost immediately just to get the project going. I have a question on the next steps. Um, is it possible to discuss an order of magnitude of cost on the next steps. We can have one we can have one prepared for you probably within a few days. Uh, you know the, there is an order of magnitude in the report now. That report is based on uh, E and R and RS means, which are two uh, methods for calculating projects. And, and then there they say, okay, 8% or 6% or 7% of the construction cost is what your engineering cost is going to be. And so that's what we did in that, in that. but it, it, it's a little, it tend, tends to be a little bit conservative. <laughs> Just to Mr. clarify Chair. that question, were you, were you asking about the pro, you know, the project cost as a whole or kind of incrementally? Well, I was leading up to the project cost, but I wanted to see what the, 
what the uh, next step, where we were going to go with that monetary. Mr. Vice Chair, we have a proposed project cost. We have that in the in the report. I'll see that you get it. I, I didn't want to make it um, generally known this evening's presentation, but Understood. we have it and each should get it. We'll get you a copy. We have it and you'll be able to review it. Yeah, and now to break it to break it down into each step by step as we're talking about, we can do that. So that's that's well. That's yeah, I, I think what I'm saying, Dennis, is I, if we're going to start to spend money, I'd like to get to the feasibility quickly, and that starts with the MBTA. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, so what I'm hearing, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, if I may is what is the cost to have you folks represent us, represent us just for that phase, a small piece to speak to the MBA, MBTA. So I think- uh, I'd, like to know, I'd like to know if the receptive guy, correct? I, 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 yes, absolutely. Um, they were receptive last time, but they expressed yeah. their concerns and they gave us some guidelines that were gonna be ridiculously expensive to adhere to. So they are receptive, I mean, because they did sit with us and, and actually, Right. Uh, hire the engineer to, to, to get back to us. So I don't think that's a major issue. I just think the presentation from the engineer is well, critical because that, that's going to be. You know, and you, well. yeah, you mentioned those guidelines. I'd, I'd like to know that the, uh, the, the directional boring or drilling will take a lot of those guidelines off of this table with this approach. That's the intent. Because I looked, yes. you know, you went, I, went, I went back and reread the report that uh, was written by Jacobs Engineer, and a lot of it was very simple: fifteen feet off, twenty-five feet off. Don't let my traps move, etc. And that's in in that approach is what we took to prevent, you know, to make that happen. Right. We we have tried to incorporate some of the requirements of the MBTA and address those those settlement issues in the approach that we've developed for. For alternative one for the, the railroad alignment. Um, what I'm hearing is that uh, the, the town would like a, essentially a proposal for the immediate next step, which is the, the coordination with the MBTA step. Mm -hmm. I think I think that triggers everything to follow. I mean, if it's a mm -hmm. dead end, we need to know. Yes, yeah, so I, I totally agree with you. Okay, so we'll we'll prepare a proposal for that and submit it to Guy. That Jimmy, are you good with that, Jim? Everybody else, oh, any well, discussion? That seems to be the, we need to know where the railroad's going first. If yep. they say no, if they shut us down, then we've got to go back to the drawing board. Absolutely. Because the other two the other two options out there aren't exactly pristine. Uh, there are options, but not as good as we'd like to see. No. I see uh, Mr. Kleepham's had his hand up for a while here. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Russ. Um, oh, is that, I thought you were waving, Russ. I'm sorry. It just... Yeah. How's everybody doing? No, um, so that, that, that was really a great, uh, a great report. I'm excited about the directional drilling. And um, just so that the, the folks at Kleinfelder know that um, I'm with GHD and we're working on the projects at the treatment facility. And uh, Dennis, I think you know uh, a colleague of mine, Craig Camp, that also is. Yeah, I know Craig very well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so I just had a. I've been in the business. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll mention that uh, you said hi to him when I talked to him. I talked to him here and there. But a uh, question just about generally not specifically with this project, but with directional drilling that I've often been having a hard time getting an answer with this. So say you drill a pipeline 100, 150 feet deep and it goes uh, it, underneath like private property. Who, who, how do you, who, who owns the rights to that pipeline if it does go underneath private property? The rights to the pipeline or the rights to the property? Well, I guess if, if, if <clears throat> could a resident say, you're planning on putting this 100 feet beneath my house, you know, we don't we don't want state, it there. It depends on the state you're in. If you're in a mineral rich mineral rich state such as Texas, you own to the center of the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Massachusetts, you just own the plot of land that you're sitting on top of. Okay. So that wouldn't be an issue for this application if you had to go underneath a private property or something like well, that. In Texas, that might be a different story. Because <laughs> that 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 there's mineral rights. Pennsylvania also. What was that? Pennsylvania also. Yeah, I know there's different states. I just mentioned Texas. That's the one that jumps yeah. in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Possibly Good to New York, too. Yeah. I was about to see Scrop in Pennsylvania, and the realtor made it known that I didn't own the land underneath my land that I was purchasing, but that was owned by the coal company or something like that. So yeah. at any time they wanted to go do something, they, they had that right. Right, right. 
Right. So that, that's the Marcella Shield in Pennsylvania now that's driving that. It's crazy. But anyways. Good to know. Thank you. Any other yeah. questions? Yeah. Anybody else? No, I'd like I'd like to I'd like to see some numbers and discuss it. I like the technology, especially looking at where you got to go with this thing. We do a lot of really very interesting work. Uh, I've got one project right now that's uh, thirteen thousand feet across the Rappahannock River. Uh, they, 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 we had to build platforms out in the middle of the river because we're putting high voltage cable in it, so it required a different way of approach it. And they, they're in the process right now lifting the cable up, the, the pipe up, and lowering it into the groundwater, into the water, and down into trenches in the water. Hmm. As as we're speaking, probably. <laughs> okay, so. No other questions. We'll we'll move forward with preparing a proposal for the immediate next steps, and we'll we'll continue to coordinate with Guy on that effort. Yeah, I think our, our main our main thrust right now is to find out what the railroad's going to say, in order to go forward. If that's if that's a go, then I think we're we're kind of working in the right direction. This whole thing looks exciting, uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like the engineering. So. Yeah, Thank by you. far. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the thank you. thank you for the presentation. Appreciate it. Jimmy, am I we assuming that we 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 have a copy of this presentation? Yes. You do. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you okay. do. So we'll we'll follow up with information for yep. Guy. Make sure you got everything. Um, there there are some videos there um, that we mentioned earlier that I, I think are they're they're enlightening if you haven't seen the process before. So that'd be yep. great to watch those. Mm -hmm. I forwarded to Christiana. I thought I saw her on a desk, a complete copy of why it did not make, because it was extensive. So maybe that's why she didn't put it totally in your package or try to email it to you. So it's okay. available. And you, Is you this know, the one guy? I, yeah, I believe so. Yes. That's how stop by and pick them up and um, we have them. Absolutely. Everything's in there. Okay. It's with my clamps. Thank you. Yes. With your clamps. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Your clamps okay. have traveled more than I thought they did. They've been all over the place. <laughs> They're handy devils. They, that they are. That okay. they are. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the presentation. And I think you've answered a lot of questions. You've made it sound like a fun uh, project. I hope you found it informative. Extremely. Yeah. Very yeah. informative. You know, you just, the only thing you've done is thrown in the one big question and that's whether or not the railroad's going to buy into it cool. okay guys thank there. you thank All you right, thank you appreciate it uh thank you yeah okay moving along dan minkle minkle boys catering <laughs> Yes. Hello, Dan. You want to come on board with this? Or you... Hey there. I, I don't have a video. My iPad's old. Sorry. Uh, well, using two cans and a string works out just as well. <laughs> uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Minkle's request to put in a catering kitchen. Uh, in the back of the Stone Path building, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Add to? No, as long as it's a, a part of the record that, you know, in the conversations that have been had that he's he's definitely not putting a dishwasher in and he's going to use paper products and that. I, I don't see a problem. Sandy? You have any? Um, the question: uh, He would hook into the existing pipe from Stone Path that Stone Path is using. Yes. And that will be done outside the building. Yes. Thank you, Peter. No problem, Mac. I'm not particularly for it, but my reasons probably don't pertain to the application. 
What are your reasons? Well, we still haven't squared with the owner of Stone Path. It's nothing to do with Dan. And the pump station, as I, I saw a note, I didn't read the email, is over capacity. <laughs> but I'm only one. Okay, do I have a... I share your okay. concern, Mac, but I, 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 I don't think I, I want to take it out on Minkle. No, nope, so, and that's why I suggested we table it the last time. Um, uh, I don't want to hold a guy up forever, though. Just for the record, I like people to know that this is not an additional flow into the sewer processing plant because the business had been being done someplace else. So I realize that, yeah. but it's additional flow to Kendrick. Yes, it is a additional flow to Kendrick, but I make a motion that we allow Minko Brothers Catering to, is that the word, tap into the existing sewer line leaving Stone Path? Second. Okay, all in favor? Mac? No. No. Uh, Sandy? Yes. Donna? Yes. Peter? Yes. And I'll go yes. So that's 4 1. So, Mr. Chairman, just to be clear, if anybody wants to add flow to an existing pipeline in the development there, Industrial Park, then they're allowed to, because that's what we're saying. As long as it's the same pipe, we can increase flows to a pump station that is documented to be over capacity. Just want to be clear. No, we're not saying that guy. We're saying anybody that wants to do it has to come to us. Now this guy's only going to pump in a, 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 a tiny amount and I understand where you're coming from. But So I, I, that's my point. If another business, approach us and wants to put a tiny amount in, then we have set a precedent that it's okay because it's not a problem. No, we set a precedent that they'll come before us to get a decision. That's the precedent. The precedent isn't, yes, they will just automatically get it. Yes, they will come before us to get permission and whether or not we'll allow it at that time. Yes. And each one will be handled on a case by case basis. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, this isn't a blanket. Uh, okay for everybody to hop in just because they feel like it. Well, it, it, so well I'm talking legitimately want to expand. And and this is, still, this is still going to be on a case by case basis. Okay. What what Dan's doing what may or may not, what Dan's doing may, may or may not, may probably not have a big impact, but I'm going to tell you going forward, there's going to be impact fees down there because we got to do something with the pumping station. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. And we're looking at seventeen thousand gallons. Well, I just, I just want to, I just want to be clear on that. I want you to know why I feel the way yeah. I do. But I, I think the mobile home. Park, I, I believe mo the mobile home park is going to put put the biggest tax on onto that. I I agree with you, Donna. But that's that's done. Yes, that's committed, and that's in the process of sale. And that yes, seventeen thousand agree. is coming at us per day soon. So that's all. I don't have any problems. The board, again, I'll be on record. The board has a right to do what they want to do. So I just want to point out that that station's in trouble presently before we add another drop to it. That's I, all. I'm going to I'm going to make the prediction that station's going to cost us big money before anybody pays an impact statement. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. more. Yeah. Okay. That's why I feel that way. Excuse me. Okay. We've had the. Uh... Motion, the second, the vote is 4-1. So Dan, you can start your kitchen. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Uh, Don't leave the faucet running. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, next item is uh, EDUs. Uh, and this is only for information. We've had some a couple of letters come in. Uh, with suggestions relative to the EDUs is because of the reporting that was done the last time there's confusion out there as to what was actually said and the interpretation of it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, but just so to make it as clear as I can, nothing has changed on the EDUs at this particular point in time. 
The only thing that's different is that we're trying to find a way to equalize them out, uh, review what's existing, and find out where changes need to be made. That nothing has been decided, nothing has been solidified. Uh, there are suggestions out there, there are proposals out there, but there are more to come. Uh, anybody have any questions to that or comments on that? So okay. I just think when we have a lighter agenda, Jimmy, yeah. what, what we've all discussed, yeah. if we start tackling yeah. it, a, a few line yeah. items, a few bullet points or line items at a time. We will. Uh, we, we've over, got over the, the future meetings. We've got, uh, I think we need to sit down and, and go over some more of these because I've got more stuff to input just for questions. Yeah. And actually, so Sandy, I can get it out Sandy had, yeah, Sandy, everybody's had good input in it. Yeah. So. so. Exactly. So, I mean, I want to get that together with, uh, as much as possible and then start to dissect it and see where we're going with it. Jimmy, do, you just, think, do you think it would be worth going back to the water department and asking one more time? Oh, yeah. It's still not, that's not off the table, Peter. But okay. I'm not going to sit here and wait for them to come through with something and not do anything with what we've got in hand right now. Oh, no. I mean, we still have so, an awful lot to do. I totally yeah. agree. Okay. But we have onset water department numbers, right? We got a report from onset. It's and available. It, huh? It's available, but I, I, I understand we have to do some sort of computer tie-in. Yes, but I thought we got a report from onset water. We have an okay to get the figures. No. Guy sent us a document a couple of weeks ago that blew up my system because it was so big. <laughs> yes or no? Did we get something from Onset? A paper Not report? Me. Guy, did you get something? I don't. I would check with Tom. This is Tom's project on the direction yeah, of Delhi. I didn't see it. I, I haven't seen something. Tom who? Tom who? Uh, I guess our, I, our expert, our, our person, looking into getting water usage as billing. Uh, I guess he's Tom Garino, the ex-selectman of Bourne. Tom Garino is a person you need to talk to. He's in charge of this project and he's got all the information you need. Who put him in charge of this project? Derek. Um, Derek, not, nothing to do with me. Um, he's on our payroll. You guys can sit, stop and talk to him. We'll give you all the numbers you need. Russ, do you have anything to kick into all of this fray? Hello. I'm sorry. I need to, I need to, January 6, 2021, Guy sent us a document showing the consumption account from Onset. Am I the only one that got it? I don't have it, Sandy. I don't remember seeing it, but that doesn't January mean it's It's huge. Okay. I'll well, maybe everybody but it did come from onset i mean it's just a it's just a, a, a excel spreadsheet but we have something okay but i haven't i don't know whether or not wareham has provided us with anything guy have they again tom has that information i would oh. check with him to my knowledge Onset anywhere I'm providing information to Tom. Tom has hired Weston and Sampson engineering firm to, to interpret all this information. So he's the guy I'd go to as a point okay. to get the information on where we are with all this. I'm just gonna, on October 5th, Onset Water Department sent this. October. Oh, okay. check, it, check with Tom. Sorry, it sent it to October 5th. It went to Derek and Guy. Guy sent it to us January 6th. Do you want me to resend it to the commissioners? What's it you're gonna give us? You're gonna see numbers, an address, What's and how much they used. House by house? Yes, by address. Oh, wow. By account. By onset, for onset. Yeah. For onset. But it's huge. It is? Yep. Yeah. So I just we we don't have to go through the whole thing to get trends, no. do we? 
No. No, no. but if on no. should sent us something that I maybe we need an engineer. <laughs> Russ, Russ. Yeah, Russ. Where are you, Russ? It's we have an engineer. Weston Sampson's been hired to do this. So you have an engineer working on your behalf to figure all these numbers out and how to apply. We keep saying we don't have anything, but on should send us something to start looking at. Well, okay, we'll check with Tom and find out where that where that's going because that's what you've got right now isn't going to do us any good. But you know, knowing where something. it's going, that's fine. It's we'll come back to that one. Given us anything. What, uh, Mr. Chairman, you had asked um, about any thoughts about Kendrick and um, the flows and and whatnot. Now, we did. I, I did go back with Guy and look at the report that we put together for the modeling. And when you look at the future connection of the the trailer park and then also the make peace developments both Kendrick and Thatcher will be severely undersized. Um, there's only so much you can do with just dropping larger pumps into an existing pump station. Uh, you, that, that only gets you a limited gain. Um, so it's looking like, it, you know, if those flows come to fruition, um, plus any other additional developments, it's likely you'd probably need a new, uh, a, a new pump station, really. Um, the cost to rehabilitate an existing mm -hmm. pump station versus the cost of putting a new one next to it, a prepackaged mm -hmm. one, um, it's probably, it would be, although they're both expensive, it's, it's likely cheaper to put a brand new one right next to it, install it, then transfer it over and decommission the old one. But uh, another item of concern is that Kendrick flows into Thatcher, which flows into Springborn, which discharges into gravity mains that run down Merchant's Way. Um, and those gravity mains are actually only eight inches in diameter until you come up to the intersection with Sawyer Street, then it jumps up to the 21 inch sewer interceptor. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the eight inch mains on Merchants Ave with that additional flow from the trailer parks and also um, from the Makepeace developments uh, are, are showing to be undersized, meaning there's the potential for surcharging um, in the gravity mains themselves. So while upgrading the pump station is one thing, we also have sewer mains downstream. So. It, it's 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 it definitely proceed with caution is the, the the statement I would I would give with adding flow to to Kendrick and Thatcher. Russ, is 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 that flow constant? It because of the it, it it's fairly constant because of the I and I. I could go back and look at the records, uh, the the pump station records for Springborn and see what it's you know if there's a drop in the the evening hours, which would be indicative of of lower I and I. Uh, but again, it's only uh, fairly small mains on narrows or on Merchant's Way, the eight-inch mains. Um, so it, it then if you upgrade both Thatcher and Kendrick, it's just putting more because those pumps pump at a very high rate, you know, a slug of water, which mm -hmm. again may overwhelm the downstream main. So even upgrading the pump stations may not be the end to this this problem. It's just the way the collection system is. Um, but that's part of the reason why we did the modeling to identify these these critical bottlenecks within the system. Now you say down Merchant's Way, isn't that the line we just finished relining? I believe it was the 21 inch line that was relined, which is only on a portion of Merchant's Way. Mm -hmm. um, the remainder, so if you went from Sawyer Street to the Narrows Pump Station, that's a 21 inch line. Um, from Sawyer Street heading back towards uh, the, the train station, that is an eight inch line. And those are the mains that collect the flow from Springborn, mm -hmm. which, you know, if we add Kendrick, if we add Thatcher, it increases the flow to Springborn. You probably need larger pumps at Springborn. Um, and then that's gonna give an even larger slug of water to the eight inch mains on Merchant's Way. So it's, uh, I mean, is is the flow from um, the uh, Mr. Minkle's business gonna blow it up? Probably not, you know, it's, it's a low flow, but when you start, go ahead. What size comes down Main Street uh, I think, further out? Let me, for one second, Russ. I believe what Russ is talking about, the eight inches on Main Street uh, headed towards Sawyer. Sawyer begins 21. Main Street itself is eight. Sawyer turns left by a fire station. That's 21. Takes it right on Merchant's Way to, to um, Narrows Pump Station. That's all 21. That's what we lined. We lined the 21 inch from down Sawyer. Uh, we took it right on Main Street for, I'm going to say, maybe a 60, 70 feet, took a left along the fire station, um, and then took a right behind the fire station on the Merchant's Way, and that's 21 inches. The eight inch pipe he's talking, he's speaking of, is along Main Street from Sawyer towards the, um, towards Elm Street, if you would, towards the canning. 
in that area there, there's an eight inch pipe that is already overwhelmed. And because Kendrick goes to Thatcher, Thatcher goes to Springborn, Springborn pumps to Main Street. That is why he's saying there's a surcharge there. So if we do anything with Kendrick to increase it, we increase Thatcher, and then we got to increase force mains, and then we got to increase that pipe itself because of the flow. And remember, make piece is not done. They have one more building to build, and that we're talking about Rosebrook. So we haven't, and, and they got more apartments to rent. We haven't seen that fruition yet. And so when that all comes to fruition, and the trailer park comes to fruition, and every gallon we add, then we have to deal with it down the road. That's so, all. We're, that's all we're saying. It's so we are going to deal with it. It's not, no if ands and buts about it. We okay. Okay. Deal with it. Okay. When it happens, what, it happens. What size pipe runs from Spring Springborn to um, to the Force Main four, by the police station? It, it's a six-inch Force Main. So you come Springborn runs down Main Street and dumps over by I, I'm going to call it Tremont Street as you go over the bridge. You know, a little railroad bridge there. Yeah, I call it Main Street. So go over the railroad bridge, and the mantle to the left is where Springborn dumps to. That right, gravity's does, down. Okay, and and then and then it, then it pumps down Main Street. The gravity's down Main Street. Yes. And what size inch, is that? It's eight inch. It, it, so the whole system is more or less undersized. Well, yes, we've been adding to it for years. Well, just, that's been there for forever. Yes, it's oversized, and and that report. Um, I believe I tried oh, to even, send it. We even, have it even if we fish, even if we fix fix the two pump stations, we're still in trouble. We still have to do a pipe. We have to pipe burst that, and make maybe make it a ten inch. Yes, sir, absolutely. So it, what it, I'm it, saying is we're, we're down a slippery slope because as we add a gallon, and the proverbial when, when does that gallon break the camel's back? I don't know. It could be one straw, two straws, three straws. Who knows? But when all that flow hits us from the trailer park, which is getting ready, and all the other developments in there. And as little business, they're gonna little gallon here and there, we're gonna get it and it's gonna be a storm. And, and I'm hoping, you know, we don't know, it could be tomorrow, it could be next month, it could be a year from now, but it's definitely gonna happen because we've, we've set ourselves up for the storm. If, oh, well, it, the, the system was installed, what, almost 50 years ago? What, I mean, the, uh, and we had, yeah, at least that. And that we, had, that, we, we had half the population that we have now. Right. I mean, it's just the planning of it didn't plan for the growth. And uh, let's get Kleinfelder back here and tell him to run a new pipe down Main Street. <laughs> there was an afterthought. Go ahead, Russ. To you. Yeah. Russ, I, I, you. I do have the memo with the map and the figure showing if that would be helpful. I can share screens just for two seconds if you'd like to see it or we can. It's in your handout, Russ. Yeah, it's in the handouts we got. Everybody's got. Yeah. got everybody should have that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've already got that. Thank you. And, and to uh, your and point, your... daughter, we think of sewer as an athlete. You're right. The town grows. We yeah. have businesses we develop, and no one looks at the sewer. It's always okay. We'll just add it. We'll add it. So you're absolutely right. As we grow, we concern ourselves with business growth and the, and the, the advantage of the businesses and the revenue from the business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and sewer becomes an afterthought. It's never a thought. Until it becomes a problem, then it's oh my God, you got a problem, fix it, and it becomes the responsibility of the enterprise, which is the ratepayers, to solve the problem. So that, that's where we are with it. Well, and 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 and, 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 and to be fair, I mean, it, we've only, you know, been really running. You know, we we as commissioners have only been what five or six years, and Seven. we inherited. And, and the thing is too. Only until recently, till we put a moratorium on, are we getting, I mean, planning was going ahead. Everybody was approving things, but nobody was ever thinking about surge. So I guess it's good that we woke them up, but maybe we woke them up a little bit too late. And, and I think I'll, we all I'll, we all know, you know, what could happen. And Guy was 100% correct with that. I, I was mistaken. It's not merchants. It is Main Street mm -hmm. that is shown. Um, but just the other thought, too, even if it was to be, you know, Main Street was just reconstructed not so long ago. And even mm -hmm. if it, we were still successful to, to pipe burst, you still have to excavate down to tie in all the service connections. So, How you know, going on, going down Main Street, you probably have 20, 30 at least connections. And it would, that it, I mean, just imagine that on Main Street trying to put this in. It's just not a 
it's not a pipeline you want to be messing with. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so, so how deep, how deep do you guesstimate that is on along on main street, Russ? I have the record drawings. Um, I could tell you exactly, but if top of my head, it would probably be anywhere from five to 15 feet deep. I don't know if they're in the 20 foot deep in that area, but they're but down, the, down a ways. You're, you're definitely into two lanes of traffic. You, you can't do it with one lane. Well, just that with that directional of uh, drilling, you know, and they're going to decommission the, the Dika school, you could certainly set up there and practically run the entire lane. You, you could, but you still need to excavate down to tie in the lateral connections. Mm -hmm. So for like the force, for the main that we're talking with Kleinfelder's doing, there's no lateral connection. So that's a perfect candidate for directional I see, drilling. I see. Yep. Yep. I understand. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, but by the same token, if we just ran a, a new pipe to carry everything from the Springborn station and left all the laterals in the main street, because then that wouldn't be over overtaxed. It, the, the eight inch pipe would be able to handle Main Street. So you'd have both pipes running down there. You could, and you'd probably be better off teeing that uh, that dedicated force main off to, by the train station, run it up Merchant's Way, get it out of Main Street as soon as you can. Um, you know, the force main only has to be five feet deep. You'd just be probably in groundwater a foot or two on Merchant, Merchant's Way there. But yeah, I mean, you can look for an alternate route. That's a great, because by putting a dedicated force main from Springborn to somewhere else, then you relieve the flow and the pressure where it used to pump to. So we have done that in other towns, rerouted force mains to free up capacity and gravity lines. Maybe we should be looking at that, guys. I really, you know. Let's Seriously not... looking at it. I, I, I can do... Yeah, I can do some desktop evaluations pretty quick and see what the most feasible routes would be. That's that's no problem at all. When do you start the modeling? Um, we're we're yeah. we're we're almost done with everything that flows to Narrows. Um, we have a couple little quirky things we got to figure out down in Cremisit, but um, we're getting there pretty soon. I just have to get. And guy, did you mention you have the water use from the fire district for the parcel by parcel? We do. If that's something you can send me, that huge Excel spreadsheet, that would. I, no, I, I call Tom. I'll have Tom because he may have broken up. Actually, Weston Sampson, Franny's on the project. You may want to call Franny from Weston Sampson. He'd be able to probably get you everything you need because uh, okay. he's going to um, have to do the job. I could Sandy probably get it. Some, I, I could, have it. Sandy has so, it. I, yeah, I, I, what I'm saying is in this format, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's so big because Excel spreadsheet. So the format, when you forward it, he may be able to give it to another form that's more oh. usable, friendly. So that's all I'm saying. You may want to get directly from the engineer. Mm -hmm. Because it has to be user friendly for, for us to, to do what well, I, I really think we should start looking at that 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 possible, you know, you know, having Russ get us that will be be good going forward because it's better to do something now than when it hits us. Well, the modeling that Russ is doing is town wide. That's through the grant program that we got. So I, I, once we move forward on that, it's going to identify the whole town, not just this area here, because we have issues throughout the town. So at least we can set priorities. Like we got the force mains to do, uh, that type of thing, but it'll, it'll allow us to set up priorities. So when they get the modeling totally complete, you'll see all the weak points. Okay. And, and we can discuss mm -hmm. rerouting. Mm -hmm. And taking alleviating the the the, the high, highly stressed areas. Mm -hmm. That was Absolutely. one of the reasons. For do, it's one of the reasons for doing the remodeling in the first place, so we know where correct. we're at, what we have, and where we need to go. But for you know, this that specific, has, but that has to get completed first in order to be able to make any decisions. The rest of it is just you know a lot of yeah. noise. Yeah. What what. It, what I could add is that with this specific application for this specific main, because we have already modeled it, you know, I'd, I'd be happy yeah. in, at the next meeting in two weeks, I can have a couple concepts prepared of, you know, where, where alternate routes may be in some, some high level order of magnitude costs. Um, mm -hmm. But I could have that ready for the next meeting. That's no problem. That would be appreciated if yep. possible. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. Okay. Uh, you have that report. Excuse me. Russ has that report from Onset. Oh, you just sent it to him? I just sent it to him. Yep. Oh, I'll write it. Thank you very much. Appreciate Good it. What's to you, pal? Uh, it's, I'm used <laughs> to these things. <laughs> okay, anything else to add to it for the moment? Nothing heard. Okay, sewer superintendent's report, please. Sir. I have no nothing this evening. Oh, my God in heaven. 
There is a guy. <laughs> there is. There is a guy. He's been right. talking to. He's been talking to his father. I can tell. There is. There's nothing for me. For me tonight. <laughs> Okay, unfinished business. We've got the sump pumps. We know about those. That's haven't done much on those. And we've the uh, homes. I'm not sure how our connections are going because of this COVID. If if much is picked up or not. Have you heard anything? Uh, we've, done, we've done a few. We're, yeah, we're still there. Are people out there. It's a couple of right. Right recently. Anybody get any new business to add? If not, it's not tonight. Gone. Donna, Donna. It's your, Donna, your turn. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Right. Uh, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Next meeting is the 8th of April.